I was. I was encouraged. I said, I think it was so intimate because we're talking about the presence of God, y'all. Yeah. It gets deep. Anybody that encountered God in the, in the Bible, they had to humble themselves. Right. Amen. Flesh couldn't even stand. And so we're in a series, Song of Songs. We teach it through the book of Songs. And we, we're in a series in a series. And um, today I'll be teaching uh, from God's presence versus your condition. Amen. God's presence versus your condition. Yes. Amen. And so, Father, we love you. We praise you today. We give you honor and glory. Hallelujah. Lord, don't let a word fall to the ground. Bless this place, God. Holy Spirit, you are already here. And we ask that you have your way in this place. Use this broken vessel to teach your people that we may grow up in the body of Christ in a mature way through the knowledge of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we can circle. He had this intimacy. He had an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. But after the resurrection, Jesus periodically appeared to them for a period of 40 days. And it was like, we don't know the number. We know that one time it was in John 21, it talked about it was the third time he appeared to him. And that was like, man, Peter was all messed up. And so we just want to stay in that area to understand that God is a presence. Peter had to learn that. When Jesus reappeared, he asked him, do you love me? And that intimacy while they was eating is an intimate time. Eating is an intimate time. So when at the end of his life, Jesus appeared to Peter and asked him three times, do you love me? And then he told him his assignment again. And, he, and then at the end of it, he said, follow me. He reiterated what he said to him at first. And so you learn that when you don't feel God's presence near at times, we are to handle it by faith. Yes. Listen. And handling it by faith is knowing that God is a presence and not a feeling. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. And you, you, you handle it by the knowing through the scriptures. Because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you handle though these lonely times. Because listen, man, this, it, they about to kick up because the world, the, the enemy is acting up because Christ is so close. Amen. And, and, and it's, you got to understand, you got to come out of your emotions. God is calling the church back to faith. In these times, Hebrews 11, 1, the unknown writer writes, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. Yes. And so additional, to help you understand faith definition, is confident expectations in the presence, power, and provision of the unseen God. Confident expectation in the presence, power, and provision of the unseen God. And that's faith in the persons of God. Repeat it, it's done. And so if I keep, when I keep saying, like he said, that, yeah, because I want you to get it in your spirit, get it in your spirit, that you won't always feel God near. And, and he said, he'll never leave me nor forsake me, and I feel alone. Which one do I choose? We have a choice, and life is about choice. And winning life is about choice. And so, but that, the next definition is absolute belief and trust in the command of God. It's also, faith is also absolute belief and trust in the command of God, which is faith in the word of God, taking God at his word. And that's what Hebrews 11 was all about. If you read it now, you'll see they took God, and he, God spoke and they took him at his word and they went through, you know, emotional stages in their life, but they made it because they held on to the faith. And so my main verse today is coming from Psalm 73, 23. Um, Asaph writes, talking about the same God. He said, yet... I am always with you. You hold my right hand. You hold me by your right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. And so Asaph understood at his time the world was in shambles and that the, that the, that the world was getting rich. You ever look at the news today? Everybody getting rich. Everybody got some money on them. You be looking at the church, you be looking at it like, man, getting all this money. The devil handing out money, y'all. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm telling you. Uh -huh. And so we, so he, he, but Asaph seen all this, but he learned the presence of God. That's where that comment came from. You read Psalm 73. He, he, was, he, he was watching all this, but then he came to his senses. And this is where that verse came from. And it's the same way, like I said last week, you got to stay, you got to come to your senses and be like, you know what? God is still in control of everything. Amen. We live by faith through his word. And so last week we talked about Peter, but this week we're going to talk about a character in the Bible named John the Baptist. His, his name got switched over, but his name was really John the Baptizer. And he was born by the power of the Holy Spirit, like Isaac was to uh, Abraham and, 
and Sarah in the Old Testament. You see God doing it all over again. And he was born by the, by the spirit uh, to his parents in their older age. And his parents were Elizabeth and Zachariah. And God blessed them with a child. She was barren. She had no children. But they were God-fearing Jews. These were two parents that, that John would have that kept God first. And listen close. God, children are more blessed to have God-fearing parents. Parents that keep God first. You know, children are met. We're going we to do a series in probably about a couple weeks on children. And, and children, they get messed up because they see the parents eating from two tables. Come on now. Come on, Pastor. You know, the Lord's Supper, and then all of a sudden they're eating from the table of the demons. And, and, and children get messed up when they see their parents like this. I saw a birthday party with my father in law house the other day, Friday or something like that. And I got there, and there was a party going on, and all these kids were out there. And I'm like, man. I see the bounce house. I told my daughter, I was like, you want to go over there? I said, I know those people. Come on, I'll get you. See, I ain't going over there. And she, we got out the car, and I looked. Then all of a sudden, you just heard little baby playing. And I'm like, they messing them kids up. Yeah, I keep my ear to the ground. I'm like, how you know little baby? <laughs> yeah. You got to have the right baby. And I was like this. I, I, I heard that and I was just, I was upset, man. Because, you know, even here in Christmas, there's some people in here, you ride around with your kids in the car and you bumping that garbage. And you be wondering why they crazy. Or they or they or they, or they learn cussing. You know, you gotta stop that as a believer if you want your kids to be raised right. Angel of the Lord appealed to Zacharias, he served in the temple. Luke 1 11. It said, then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when, Je when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. Fear always comes before change. Mm -hmm. Or when God is up to something. Mm -hmm. Zechariah, he said, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. And you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight. Praise God. And many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will never take wine or permanent drinking. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He was a soul winner. And he will go on before the, before the, the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So John the Baptist prepared the way for the Lord. He prepared the people. Christ was coming. He was, he was he, like I said, when, when Jesus came, he was already standing in the water. Well, he prepared the way for the Lord. Listen close. God will always have for people, prepared people in your world waiting on you. You got to understand that. To guide you all the way successfully to glory. God will always have prepared people in your role waiting on you. There's somebody waiting on you now. You just got to learn to keep going. Yeah. I got a therapist. I just let everybody know. Amen. And I ran into this brother, and he was a believer. Amen. He, he, man, he blessed me. He being real with me, you know. He was in my role, and, I, and instantly I knew he's from the Lord. I was like, man, I'm telling you, keep going. God has prepared people waiting on you. If you're trying to go to school, just keep going. They'll show up. Yeah. That person that know the inside, and the ins and outs or whatever. Yeah. Just keep going. Learn to keep going. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about your life in Matthew 6. Don't worry about your life. He said, because it's already pre-planned. Predestination, foreknowledge, all these words in the Bible, they come because God already was at the, he is at the end of your life. He already started it and put you at the start of it. That's why you say this, man, I've been here before. Yep. Man, you ever seen this? I've seen this. You know, that's because you're walking in a finished work. John the Baptist will grow to be an adult and lived in the desert. The scriptures didn't tell us how long, but I believe the gap was his preparation, just like Jesus from 12 to 30. And then to talk about his life, but here's the preparation. Here's the sanctification part of his life. God set John the Baptist apart. And he was living in the desert. 
and, and weird. That was, it was kind of weird. His life was weird. Everybody else that was young was having fun, but here this young dude off to the side. So listen, young people, don't don't get don't think it's weird when you when you don't fit in. Amen. Yeah. I, I ended up getting a robbery when I was 14 years old because I didn't I tried to fit in. And I became somebody else. But he was in the sanctification process. Around 30 years old, John the Baptist began to preach in the desert in Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. He was the one spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 40 and 30 says, A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make a straight path for him. So John the Baptist will go on to baptize thousands of pre people, preaching the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And this made sense that he went before the Lord because... And his baptism was, was repentance. Because that's what we do before we, when we come to the Lord. It's the first thing we do. We repent. Yes, we come to the cross. We repent. It makes sense. And it washes us clean. He's dealing with water. You just got to put it together. And he's washing people getting baptized with water. And, and it's a clean. We get clean. And then Christ comes into our life. So here is John the Baptist preparing his coming. And it makes sense. John lived in the devil. He placed he, his, his place of sanctification. And sanctification means to be set apart, yeah. made holy. Yeah. Not just set apart. Yeah. God is doing something in your life, preparing you. Yeah. Yourself. Yeah. But Matthew 3, 4, Pat Matthew writes, food, he ate, he ate locusts and wild honey. And then we read, read up here, it said that he didn't drink wine or nothing. He is not to drink wine and all that. And I'm telling you, he was a healthy dude. <laughs> Wild honey and low, he was healthy. He didn't drink. And, and just the leadership, I just don't drink. People always try, like, well, we can have some wine. You know, you're like, well, who are your, look at your family line. Who all dying in your family line, black call it? <laughs> Literally. You got friends that's dying, but you want to sip some wine. Listen, I told you, I decided to die to it. And, and it ain't nothing wrong with drinking and all that, but you let the Holy Spirit deal with you in that area. Because sometimes you can drink and it's okay with you, but you got all the people around you, they dying from it, so you have to be their example. Yeah. Look, I'm going to give up my life to you, brother. I ain't drinking no more. And you let that person know that's deep in alcoholism mm -hmm. or in drugs. And that's power. Yeah. Yeah. He was sent by God. This is why his ministry is so fruitful. John 1, 6, John writes, he said, there, John the disciple writes, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. And, and when I first came to uh, uh, um, Light Church Milwaukee, I, man, listen, I had to stop doubting myself and God. When I first got here, man, when God is, is, is calling you deeper, the ninth grade dropout, and now you're teaching people that uh, uh, run colleges and lawyers and you get what I'm saying? You, you, and they talking to you. They don't even know you. you like, what? You feel out of place. You're like, hold on, man. But, but, so I had to rest in being sent. I was sent. And, and, and then he started preparing me. It was certain books coming to me and turn it in. I turned on certain things. He was educating me and you know, just preparing me, making me, giving me thick skin with a soft heart. And I'm getting better, and I'm getting better. I still, I still got flesh on. I get weak sometimes. Because people can be mean. And then God spoke to me. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, he said, on the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. That's the verse he gave me one day when I was scared. He gave me that verse and said, I, I command you to walk in that. Amen. John the Baptist would be one of the, the prophets, uh, the prophet Malachi talked about. And this is Malachi is the book between the, the last book, Malachi and Matthew. They start, that's the last book of the Old Testament, and the new one is Matthew. And, 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 and Malachi talked about him in um, Malachi 4, 5, and 6. And, and, and John the Baptist would be the first one to speak from God after 400 years of silence. Four hundred years of silence between the New Testament and the Old, between Malachi and, and Matthew, was four hundred years. God didn't even speak. Can you imagine how they felt? 
When God didn't speak, John the Baptist was, was the last Old Testament prophet under the Old Covenant, helping prepare the New Covenant. Yeah. John the Baptist had a powerful attribute about him. He knew who he was, and he knew who he was not. Because they came to him, who are, who are you? So we can go back and tell the people, are you the Christ? Are you a liar? He's like, no, no. He said, but then they were like, well, who are you? He said, I'm the voice of the one calling out of the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. He knew who he was. And it's the same way here, y'all. You got to know your calling. It makes you more powerful. You got to know who you are. You can't have an a, 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 a identity crisis. You got to know who you are. John the Baptist had another powerful attribute about him. He knew who Christ was. And that brought power to his ministry, prepared for Christ. When you're prepared for, for somebody, you got to know who you are. You got to know who you're called. You can't be all mixed up. Because you're already coming to somebody that's mixed up. So you got to just like get it together. That's why the sanctification part is so important. Because that's when you learn who you are and who you're not. What you're called to do, sanctification, set apart. Because you'll be thinking loneliness is a bad place. No, it's a good place. I preached on this a while back. It's a good place. John 21, uh, uh, he, uh, he, he had some powerful attributes. He knew who Christ was. John 1, 29, the text, uh, John the disciple writes, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. Talking about John the Baptist. He said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Then he said it again in John 1, 35 to his disciples. And that's how Andrew found Christ, Peter's brother, who we talked about. It's Peter's older brother, who we talked about last week. That's how Andrew found Christ, because he knew who he was. And that's great leadership. John the Baptist also had a powerful experience in his ministry as he prepared the way for Christ, even though he never did a miracle. John the Baptist never did a miracle, but he had powerful experiences. In John 1.32, it says this, then, then John gave his testimony. He said, I saw the Spirit of God come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I, I, when, he told me, when he baptized him, he said, I myself did not know him. And this was his cousin. Then Jesus and John was six months apart. But, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man whom you see the Spirit come down and remain on is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I, and then this one John said, I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. He had a powerful experience. Remember at the baptism, he said, the Father spoke. He said, this is my Son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. He saw heaven open. He saw all this. But, but but even in knowing all this and all the experience with God and, and with Christ, John the Baptist was no match for the loneliness, not feeling God near that would come in his life. And then look how powerful this dude was. But he was still no match for the loneliness when he him feeling God not near in his life like Peter. He was still no match for it. To my first point. My, my main point one, John the Baptist's condition changed and God and so did God in his life. John the Baptist's condition changed, and God did too. Mark 6, 17, Mark the disciple writes uh, about how, why he changed. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. And he did this because of Herodias, his brother's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to marry your brother's wife. Here's this brother that took his brother's wife, and she was, all, she was married, and he married her. That's power. Only power would do something like that. But the, the lady now, I believe her name was Bernice. And she was like this lady. I read about her life. She, she liked the men with money. Mm -hmm. She liked it, that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he had power. So she like, let me go here. Yeah, you think you got until some more money come along. In the game. But look, men, can you imagine you come home and your wife married your brother? <laughs> this is what was going on in this story. And John the Baptist said, man, this, according to, this is not right, man. John the Baptist was all messed up about the presence of God and about Christ and about who Christ was as he sat in this prison cell. Can you imagine that? And he ain't had no TV or no fan. So he was all messed up. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, as soon as he, somebody go to jail, give me a TV. Man. <laughs> Give me a fan, man. All because he decided to speak up for what was right. It, it's what preachers do. And that's why a lot of people get mad at, at pastors. Because we tell you the truth. 
and explain you to be like this. Because your heart will be exposed to what the Holy Spirit is saying and just be like, I receive it. Because <laughs> that's where your blessing is. Don't get it mad. See, we catch, we catch hell as pastors because we hold on to God's word and we speak the truth of it. Amen. It's not even us, but we catch hell about it. But it's what God said. But prison got the best of John the Baptist and what he knew to be true. Luke 7, 17, Luke writes the words of John the Baptist while he was in prison. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. John's disciples told him all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one to come or should we expect someone else? Can you imagine that? He the one said, this is the son of God. But him not understanding the presence of God messed him all the way up. Him not understanding that God was a presence messed him all the way up and messed these, 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 these guys up. And I'm a witness to everybody here. I just want you to understand. Prison does something to the mind. Yeah. 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 Human, God didn't create us for prison. It has to do with sin. Man, I'm telling you, every time I wanted to commit suicide, that's why I always pray for the county jail and people in prison. I always pray because I know how it feels. The, the, the spirit of demons, they lurk around bondage, people that's in bondage. So I can understand what, what he was saying. The devil will make, when you're sitting in prison, he'll make it seem like everything that God did in your life ain't real, man. But sometimes when you don't experience it, you can't understand these stories. Satan got the best of John the Baptist while he was in prison by distorting the presence of God in his life. He let the loneliness get the best of his faith. You got to keep the faith. His whole experience with God. His whole experience. The enemy is after your first conviction. When you first got saved, and he's after your experiences with God. That's it. If he can distort them in your life, Woo. That's when John was like, hey, go ask him, is he the one to come? He forgot about it. He, look, heaven wasn't even real to him no more. He saw heaven open. He heard the father speak. This is my son. But he was all messed up. Listen, coach, God will allow some things to happen in your life to show you what's in your heart. Because you can be on fire for God and be happy. Everybody think you that person. And God will, 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 will switch a rule on you in your life. Not to hurt you, because his plans are, Jeremiah 29, 11, my plans are not to harm you. It could have been that my plans are to show you some things. Because when, when everything changes, think about it. Then your heart is exposed, and then you're like this. Well, well make me strong in this area. You don't even feel like, you thought you loved him that way. You thought you loved him that strong. Then your condition changed. Understand that, that the change in conditions will come abruptly, abruptly at, at times in the will of God for Christ followers. And usually it's around the times when you're comfortable or on fire for God. Yeah. That's what it happens. Those are the times when, you, when you're comfortable or on fire for God. God will here, come straight to you and be like, boom. And you'll be like this. What? <laughs> you're comfortable right here. God is always on the move. And this is what John the Baptist was facing. God had came and switched his life around. He was on fire for the Lord. Now he's sitting in the prison for the will of God. We must understand that our circumstances may change in God's will, but God don't. Amen. Circumstances change, but he don't. Amen. Which one do I hold on to? And also, we must not look at John the Baptist sideways, because how many times in your condition God changed in your life? And you were not in the cell. You changed on him. You had a house full of food. Your heat was on. You had gas in your car. You just changed on him. You tripped. I'm tripping. Many members of the body of Christ and the church as a whole in these last times will experience some changing conditions for God's will. And they will, they will come on those Christ followers who are not afraid to speak up for what's right. Those who want to... These are the Christ followers that won't compromise God's word in these last times. 
Your condition will change. Because listen, John the Baptist was telling Herod that it's not right. His condition changed from speaking up of what was right. We are living in times that the many Christ followers and many leaders and pastors are scared to speak up for what's right according to the scriptures because they don't want to offend nobody. They like their comfortable positions. Listen, I'll tell you, man, homosexuality and all the things that's going, it's wrong. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to speak up on it. I'm going to speak about it. But I'm going to be very sensitive because that person is still a human being and God still loves them. But I still got to, when I'm on this pulpit, I got to speak up what's right. I speak for God. And there's a lot of people that won't speak up for God because guess what? It may change their condition. A lot of churches spend a lot of money and be like, hold on. We ain't going to talk about that. We're just going to be a feel good church. But you got to deal with sin. The sin is like gangrene. Are you in a current circumstance that if if, 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 if you speak up to sin, you will lose your place, your position on the person? If, you, if the answer is yes, this was from God. You're in the wrong condition. We have some of us be in conditions and we scared to speak up or stay with people and all you put up with anything because you think he ain't who we say he is. God got a plan for you. You don't have to be in that circumstance. And you put up with anything. You in the wrong condition. John the Baptist sent two of his disciples to ask Jesus, was he the one to come? And I know these disciples were all confused because they, they received it with instructions from him. All he talked about was who Christ was and, and the kingdom of God is coming. And who Christ was and who the kingdom of God is coming. They were all confused on the road walking to go ask Jesus this one simple question. When we don't understand that the presence of God is not a feeling, but a present in this difficult times, we get offended with God. And Satan not only gets the best of us, but it affects the people around us, especially parents. Disciples to ask Jesus, was he the one to come? I believe he got irritated and, and mad sitting in that cell, still holding on to God. You know, John the Baptist was a praying man. And his prayers not getting answered. Remember when the disciples came to Jesus, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray as John teaching his disciples. So you know he was a praying man and his prayers are not getting answered. He don't feel God near. But he was in the will of God. Have you ever got mad at God because he was taking too long in your changed condition? And you a prayer warrior. I believe John the Baptist was mad at God because he knew and believed God could do anything. And, and nothing is happening in his life. But John the Baptist was like, I'm still in prison and this dude doing all these miracles. I prepared the way for you, dude. Come get me. All type of thoughts come in your head. All I do for you, God... That's how we do. We be like, Lord, I've been, I, I've been slaving for you. We're still in God's will. Whenever our conditions change for the worst, we are to keep a good attitude. I want you to understand in that. Having a good attitude and the changed conditions come from knowing who God is. That he's a presence. And knowing that he will never leave you no for a second. It keeps you with a good attitude. Let's go deeper. I believe a lot of frustration that John the Baptist had from God did not come him not fully understanding when he said, I must decrease. Yes. Listen, let's get deeper. I don't think he fully understood that. He understood that. When he, when he saw Jesus come, he told his disciples, he was like, I must decrease that he may increase. He recognized that. But I don't believe he understood what he said out of his mouth that I may decrease and he must increase to his disciples. This decrease that he spoke out of his mouth will cost him his life. You don't understand when, we, when God adds to our life or, and takes away, we don't know why and how deep it will take us. But it took, it cost John the Baptist his life. He didn't understand what he was saying out of his mouth at the time, but it was connected to his changed condition. 
His decrease had to do with this prison. He didn't understand that. You will never know what your increase or your decrease will cost you. John, John was sent only to prepare the way for the Lord, and now his job was done. And I believe John was still sticking around. You know how sometimes you just you stick around with God telling you to move on, and you don't move on, stuff will happen. John the Baptist said, I, I must decrease. Look, he's supposed to get out of the way. I don't believe John the Baptist should have had no disciples. I believe all his disciples should have been like, hey, y'all, y'all go with him. My job is done. He was still lurking around. And that can be dangerous. When God calls you, when God decreases you or tells you to come out of something, you stick around. It gets dangerous. I even thought, why did John, uh, uh, why did John still have disciples? His ministry was done. So the prison cell was necessary spiritually. You got to understand that. So the prison cell that he was in was necessary spiritually. Listen close. You would think that John the Baptist was thrown in prison because of what he said to King Herod about his brother's wife when he told him, man, you sleeping with your, that's not right, man. That only did, but I'm going to tell you, that only set the atmosphere to move him to his condition. God will allow some things. Okay, I got to stop John. He had to be stopped. He had to be decreased. John the Baptist had to be stopped. The old and the new covenant were at war between John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. He was the last Old Testament prophet. He, he was the last prophet of the Old Testament. It had to be stopped so that the New Testament can, can, bring, can get the power going. Jesus was becoming greater. He had to be stopped. So spiritually, he had to be stopped. But sometimes you don't understand that. Hebrews 11.1, 1, the, the unknown writer says this, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. John had to be stopped. So the, the, the spiritually, the jail cell was important because that's what he died at. He represented the old covenant. And, and God was showing us through John's life what happened to the old covenant. He died in that prison. His head was cut off. But it stopped the old covenant. So that Jesus could become greater. Let's give God a hand clap for understanding. Spirit. Jesus reassures John the Baptist's faith. He reassured him. John Luke 7 20. When, he, when the men came to Jesus, John the Baptist's disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, they said, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, are you the one to come? Well, should we expect someone else? At that very moment, Jesus assured many uh, who had diseases and sicknesses and evil spirits and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who are, have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. And Jesus said this, blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. So I'm going to tell you, God is always at work right now. It's dark in your life, but it can never put out the light. The light will always shine, no matter how dim it is. It can be this low. It's still shining. You just got to find it. No, no, no. You just got to know it. Jesus did not define John the Baptist the way he defined him. He simply stated, go back and tell John what you see and what you hear. Jesus still saw the best in him. That's what happens when you start to understand the presence of God and have the knowledge of God in your head. You, you, you start, you see the, the best in other people. Even though they messed up, they messing up. You got Christ follows evil from two places. But even when I do see him, I'll be like, hey, what's up, brother? Love you, man. Because it's annoying for me. Because I know the lame walk. And the deaf hear. This is in my head. This is the mindset. And this is what Jesus said. He, he didn't define John the way he saw him. Jesus did not define John the Baptist the way he defined him because Jesus understood his condition had changed and that his loneliness, that, that his loneliness was being manipulated by Satan. This was a powerful dude. 
Satan was at, at work. John 7, 28. And Jesus still defined him through eyes of love. He said, I tell you, after he said, go back and tell him that, he, then he turned to his disciples and said, I tell you, out of all the people born of women, John is the greatest. And here's John sitting in a prison cell not understanding that. But somebody else saw it. You have to see it for yourself. You have to know it for yourself. I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then I'll call it my clothes. But he said, Jesus said this after that. He said, Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Blessed is he that is not that is not brought into offense or doubt because of me. And he said, Because I am who I say I am. He is who we say he is. And, and John thought that nothing, that God was not at work because it stopped. He was in a, in a changed position. And just because you're in a changed position, God is still on the move. You just got to keep praising him in your position as time going on. And you're not feeling like God is near. But you got to look at the fruit. Look for what God is doing. And so, Father, I thank you for this moment. I praise you. And I, I just feel like some of y'all are so far away from Christ. And God is saying, look, there's no more time to waste. You don't have to be perfect coming to me, God said. I'm going to be the one to mature you. I'm, I'm going to be the one that's going to have prepared people in your role for you. And I'm starting with Pastor Rock. Hallelujah. And so, God, I just thank you for this moment. And if that's you today, I just want you to just say, Lord God, forgive me of all my sins. I am a sinner. I am in need of grace. I need you to come in my life. I need your presence in my life. And when you come in my life, help me to understand your presence. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe you raised yourself from the dead. And now that I'm clean, forgiven of every sin, Holy Spirit come inside of me. Help me to do God's will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's greater than just me being all over the place. It's about God's will. It's about making Jesus real to a dying world. I'm gonna let you all get to look at this tonight, church. Cause they can do what God's work and make the light church. It ain't a never touch a bomb like the light church. I feel the presence of the Lord in the light church. I'm gonna let you all get to look at this tonight, church. Cause they can do what God's work and make the light church. It ain't a never touch a bomb like the light church. I feel the presence of the Lord in the light church. So what's up when I have a water in the light church?